Hey, what's up and welcome to the Beyond Sundays podcast. My name's Brett Stewart. I'm the host. And today I have two of the most awesome mothers that I have been able to witness um, daily, honestly, during the work week for almost seven years. Uh, June 1st is coming up seven years, um, which is absolutely crazy to me. But these women are amazing. They are also spiritual moms and sisters to me. And this is going to be a special little Mother's Day rendition. Um, This is going to come out right after Mother's Day, which is May 8th. Uh, It's a Sunday of 2022, which also happens to be my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, Mom, (laughs) just in advance. But when you hear this, it's going to be after the fact. But we're celebrating you all weekend. Anyways, uh, so my guests today are Deanna Fields and Jessica Hallgren. And so... I want y'all, you can decide who goes first, but introduce yourselves. Uh, Who are you? What do you do? How long have you been mothers um, biologically? And what do you do around here at Beltway? Because you're both on staff. You're both some of our pastors. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we'll just kind of jump into the discussion and the conversation of what it looks like and what it means to be a mother. So we'll we'll go to Deanna first because Jessica pointed to Deanna. Age before beauty, is that? No. (laughs) I usually just tell people beauty and age before me, so... (laughs) Well, I'm Deanna Fields, and I'm the communications pastor here at Beltway Park. I've been on staff probably for... And she's my boss. <laughs> I am your boss. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I've been 22 years, I think, almost, yeah. on staff here in different roles. Um, was women's pastor and leader for about 19 years until Jessica stepped in and then got to move into some some newer, different roles. And um, so, yeah. And what else did you ask me? How long have you been a biological mother? Oh, okay. And how many, how many kids do you have? Actually, these two ladies, they are mothers to girls. Yes. And so tell us <laughs> how girl long you've been a mother. Tell us about your girls and your husbands, because they're important, too. Oh, they're for part sure. of this. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So I have three adult daughters, Mm -hmm. and my oldest will be 33 in July. That's crazy to me. I can't believe I'm that old. And uh, one's fixing to turn 30, and then I have one that is 27. So one is single, one is married with a child, and another one on the way, and then one is engaged. Yep, about to be married. Right. We're in a great season of of blessing and um, it, it's exciting. Uh, grandbaby number two is due the day before my third daughter is supposed to get married. Oh, so, man. you know, <laughs> wow. it's a it's a wonderful, blessed season. The things that you pray into for a long time, and so I'm trying to live in the moment and have joy in this season and and all the things. So, and then tell us about your husband. My husband Doug is awesome. He is a great dad and husband. He is a great. Uh, girl dad. And uh, I I couldn't have done, can't do anything that I do in my job, in this ministry, if it weren't for Doug Fields um, helping out in things at home and just who he is and just, you know, what he carries yeah. as a man and a father and a husband. Yeah. And I've known, yeah. I've known the Fields for, uh, well, since I was in kindergarten, because Taylor right? and I <laughs> literally grew up at the same school from kindergarten through graduating high school. Um, and then your girls were all uh, mascots. Uh, well, t- the two, well, two of them were. Uh-huh. Two, yeah. Yeah. And so I remember three years of that. Deanna, because I was a, just a crazy nut job of a teenager, and <laughs> she pulled me in a couple you were of times. Creative. I was creative. I was creative in a lot of energy and didn't <laughs> care to look like a fool. And so Deanna pulled me in on a couple of a, yes. a skits for the mascot for pep rallies and stuff. You were so. awesome. Yes, I've known you for a very long time. For a long time. <laughs> okay, Jessica, what about you? Who are you? How long have you been here at Beltway? How long have you been a mother? Tell us about your girls and your husband. So my name is Jessica. Um, I have two daughters, Ruby and Layla. Ruby is 12, about to be 13. Layla is 10, about to be 11. So I have kind of teen, preteen daughters. Um, I'm married to Franz. We just celebrated our 15-year wedding anniversary, so pretty excited about that. Um, I've been working at Beltway uh, since about 2014, 
I started in the CDC um, working with preschoolers when my kids were in preschool, and it was such a blessing and so much fun. The CDC is amazing. And Deanna started in CDC, I started too. I CDC, too. And we both right. taught music in the CDC. We so did. great things come out of CDC <laughs> music teachers. <laughs> and um, ended up moving into youth ministry and then moving into women's ministry. Mm-hmm. And what's really cool about this and even doing this podcast, I was saying to Deanna and Brett before we pushed record is that I used to go to D and still do go to Deanna for advice as a mother. And especially when my kids were preschoolers, because I just saw Taylor and KK and Jordan and saw the way that they love Jesus and live their lives. And, Hmm. and having daughters, I was like, man, I just want to glean from Deanna what I see happening in her kids' lives. And even to this day, every once in a while, I'm like, hey, I want you to pray impartation on me for what, (laughs) how well your daughters are doing in the way that they've grown up as, as young women of God. It's beautiful and it's amazing. It's such a blessing. And of course, I agree with Deanna about what she said about Doug. It's the same with Franz, also known as Franck when he's helping decorate in women's (laughs) ministry. (laughs) We love Franz. And um, I just couldn't do what I do without him. Being a woman in full time ministry, you definitely, and a girl mom. You don't do that alone. No, you cannot do that alone. And you Mm -hmm. can't do it without the backing of a strong spiritual leader. Right. And even uh, a dad raising young women in this world and in today's society is so important. (laughs) That role is so important. So important. Such a big deal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jessica, if you remember it or not, you and Franz, it was mainly his story, but y'all are both on the podcast for our very first yes, episode. They are one. episode <laughs> one. Uh, it's pro. called Brain Tumor <laughs> Belief and Breakthrough. And mm-hmm. it is a just a powerful, very powerful, just a Love powerful testimony and journey of, of what they went through and uh, when, when they found out that, that mm-hmm. Franz had a brain tumor. And so I encourage everyone, after listening to this, go back and listen to episode one if you haven't already. Or if you have, go back and listen to it again. But even in that, you, I love that you get to, to hear the, the father heart of Franz come out and just that leader um, perspective in him over his family and his love for mm-hmm. y'all. And so... Well, cool. So I want to talk about motherhood. In the hall earlier when we were walking up here, I told Deanna, (laughs) we're going to talk about momdom. And I was like, you know, like a kingdom is like where a king reigns. And so like momdom is like the reigning (laughs) of mothers. And so... um, Is that kind of like, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody uh happy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about momdom uh, (laughs) today. But... I. Obviously, I'm not a mom and I'm not a lady. <laughs> and I think that there's a significant perspective and lens that we all need. Um, and and what y'all walk through as as biological and spiritual mothers, um, the, the body of Christ needs that, not just for how to know God mm-hmm. in a different way, um, but also just what it looks like to to sow into, to pray, to nurture, to disciple. I mean, there's so many things that that a mom does. Um, and in fact, I'll say this now because she'll receive it. Um, my mom will receive it on her birthday, and this is coming out right after her birthday. But uh, we were putting together this... Uh, it's her 60th birthday. I'm not supposed to Woo-hoo! say that out loud, but happy <laughs> birthday, mom. Happy birthday. Um, I'm in September, so <laughs> nice. I'll join the club. Come on. And so um, my brother and I, and then our wives... We uh, we were writing out uh, sixty reasons why we love you, and Sweet. so my brother and I got twenty each, and then mm-hmm. uh, our wives got ten each. And I was writing these out, and I was thinking on these memories of my mom growing up, and like I just started to like ball and cry yes. and lose it and because there's such like sweet precious memories and and a lot of times like it, it's been a really long time since now like now that I've been a, an adult for a really long time it's been a really long time since I've reflected back on mm-hmm. and seen how much those moments impacted my life and that like I would not be where I am without just such right. love support belief in and so anyways I, I want to open up the conversation. So I guess the first way to kick it off is what does it mean to be a mother? And we can hit that from both, you know, biologically, but also spiritually. Mm-hmm. So who wants to go? Well, um, I think in, in being a mother and even just being a woman, I think there's some things that the Lord in, 
um, gives to us, um, that we carry that feminine heart of God. And whether you are a, um, a biological mother or a spiritual mother or uh, you want to or desire to be a mother, that there are things that the Lord has placed within the heart of a woman that gives life and brings mm-hmm. forth life. And so I think a lot about that even as is Eve, the first mother <laughs> that brought forth uh, children onto the earth. But we have the opportunity in any situation or scenario that we're in to to call forth life and, and, and bring birth that even yeah. in, in people into situations. And so you don't have to be a biological mother to be able to do that. And so I, I love that part of, of being a woman. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And something I've I've been big on like the last year even that the Lord just I, I can't move away from it is that in all things that God does, he breathes, speaks, yes, and creates life. He yes. brings life no matter what. Like it, it's the most amazing thing that life is always victorious. Yes. Like even in how the earth and nature functions, like you know, whether it's an animal or whether it's a flower or a plant that dies, that seeds the ground and then life yeah. comes up. After, you know, a forest fire like just rips through or a grass fire rips through and makes things barren right. and just just black and destroyed and, and, and dust, like greater, greener life comes forth. And that's just, that is such a beautiful picture of the heart of God. Mm-hmm. And then exactly like that, that is kind of a motherly attribute of who he is and what an amazing thing that, that women have the gift and the privilege of, of getting to partner in with the heart of God right. in a different way than, than a man gets to, to experience. Like what a yeah. gift. I always think of mothers being the most nurturing, the safest place of uh, Even being a little girl growing up, you know, when you skin your knee, when your heart gets broken, when a friend is mean to you, you want Mm -hmm. to go cuddle up to your mom. That's a safe place and it's a soft, nurturing, warm place. And I even think about like being a mother bear, like that's a term we use where mothers are so protective (laughs) Protective, over their children. And, (laughs) And this year I was at a conference at Bethel where they start talking about in the prophetic move of the mother heart of God. And we've really Mm. embraced the father heart of God. And so I started studying that and learned that one of the names of God is El Shaddai, but I never really understood that that was part of the feminine heart of the Lord. And it means God Almighty. It refers to God completely nourishing, satisfying, supplying his people with all their needs as a mother would her child. Mm. Connected with the word God for El, this denotes God who freely gives nourishment and blessing. He is our sustainer. And so he's a sustainer of life. And, you know, the mother's body is made to sustain life for a child after Mm -hmm. a child is born. But that's part of God is both, you know, if you go back to Genesis, they were made in his image, both male and female are made in the image of God. And so just even going into that and digging deeper, what does that really look like? Because, you know, we think about um, you can be a mother, but are you giving that nourishment, not just Mm -hmm. physical nourishment? Are you nourishing Mm -hmm. in all the places? Mm -hmm. And so you can physically be a mother, but I've been really digging into what does it mean to be a spiritual mother to your children too? I think there is a both and, and we can separate the two if we're not careful. I think it's really important to make sure that we are nourishing and sustaining the life and the ones that God has gifted us with in yeah, both good. ways, you yeah. know, physically mm-hmm. and spiritually, and just really feel a greater need, even in women's ministry, you know, speaking to mothers, spiritual mothers, mothers to be, you know, mm-hmm. M- mm-hmm. women with the mother heart of God, even if they don't have children, looking into that, like, how can we really get back to the closest part of mm-hmm. that heart of God as women in the body of Christ to be the safe place that we're called to be, to be the nourishing place, to yeah. be that warm mother bear protective of of the people in our body and yeah i love that and that thought of nourishment of giving nourishment and we can do that in so many ways and so i love that you know whether that's through in, encouragement or in, impartation of something or a blessing a mother's blessing um i love that even discipleship just right. general discipleship just and taking too, even like 
how do you protect someone's heart? How do you guard their heart? Right. You know, what's yeah. your heart behind that towards them? So, yeah. Well, you even just said a minute ago the word discipleship, and and when I was thinking about this this podcast, you know, like I, I think about all that a mother does, and it literally is. You know, we would use kind of the biblical churchy term like discipleship, but mm-hmm. that's exactly of what it is. It mm-hmm. is a nourishing, caring, you know, pouring forth life, helping one develop to a place where they can sustain on their own and they can step out and then they can replicate the process Mm -hmm. for others. And so um, I guess, how have you experienced that one for yourself? And then what has that journey looked like as you've, um, you've discipled other women, but also, also men too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think you get the opportunity in the ways that the the Lord puts people in front of you, and so whether that starts out as you know being my children, my my three girls, and then the opportunity to raise them in the Lord, um, in the church, in the Word, um, teach them about Holy Spirit, uh, teach them about Jesus. Um, pray over them, bless them, spend time in the Word with them. Um, you get those opportunities in the home with their friends that come into the home. You're not just mothering your own children. I mean, yeah. you know, we had some big cars that carried a lot of children. Yes. <laughs> we carried a lot of had. children yes. to uh, <laughs> sporting events, and there were a lot of um, slumber parties and a lot of people that were in our home and um, – I say this all the time, if you're a believer in Christ, if you're a Christian, then you are probably going to have some people live in your home that don't necessarily, may not be related to you, or they could be, or you're going to be able to have the opportunity to be hospitable and um, love on people in your home in some hard places sometimes, and that was the case in our life. So whether it was a niece and nephew living with us for a season, uh, our two mothers lived with us for a season, probably for about a seven-year stretch. We had one and then two together and then another one. And in that role kind of being reversed in almost a sense of mothering your mother, you know, you get the opportunity to honor, as the Scripture says to do, and love in those places. And and the transition is really hard for everybody, but you get that opportunity within your home many times to do that. And I even got to see my children model this in college, I was thinking back the other day, we bought a house in Lubbock that all of our children kind of rotated through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they lived yeah. there and they had roommates. And I began to count the number of young women that have lived in that home with them. And y'all, it's like close to 30. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've had the house for 12 years. And it's like 30 women in and out of that home. And um, even seeing my daughters bring in a young woman that just needed couldn't even pay rent, you know, at the time, but needed a a safe place to be for the summer or maybe a couple of months or so that was really exciting for me too to see them love on and bring in and share and and bless. But as a spiritual mother, whoever the Lord puts in front of you has been a great opportunity to to get to do that and again dig into the word with them or share um, a nugget of strength of the Word of God with them, or even pray with them, or bless them, or teach them how to pray. Um, That's been a huge thing for me. Prayer's been super significant in my life. I come from a very long line of good, solid Bible (laughs) reading, Holy Spirit loving, Jesus believing um, mothers, and watching them pray pray for their family, battle for their family, and teach me how to do that. And so I love teaching that aspect to yeah. to whoever the Lord puts in front of me. And it's been real cool to Deanna, just to see your oldest, Taylor. Um, again, I've grown up with Taylor and now, and Taylor also works with us. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was the young adults pastor for, for six years here. And um, as soon as she came to Abilene, uh, back to Abilene, she just stepped in and 
served and like mm-hmm. she has discipled and continues to disciple so many women. Yeah. Like at one point I'm like, Taylor, you can't have a group of 35 <laughs> girls. Like, my gosh. And but there's just something about it. And yeah. and it's a testament to to what you've poured in and it's caught, it's stuck. And like she is doing that for others. And then it's mm-hmm. been cool to see how others have done that. And I mean that is exactly what discipleship is. Um, You know, I think sometimes, I don't know, have y'all ever wrestled with the idea that like being a mother or just being a leader of like your children is less than like, have you, like, have you fought that before? I, I know that when I talk to some people, like it's, they have these big dreams and aspirations, but then it's like, oh, but you know, I have to be, I have to be a mother. Like I can just influence two or I can just influence three. Have like, have y'all had to fight that at all? I mean, y'all are both in positions where you get to lead yeah. multiple people, but I don't know. Have you ever fought that? Have you ever a helped people? Story. I mean, when I became a mother, I was working full time and then I had the, the two girls and then I was pregnant with the third one. And by that time, Doug's schedule was super busy. Mine was very super busy seasonal in the summer while I worked for the city uh, convention services director. And so, um, there was a lot of time. It was getting hard. <laughs> yeah. So I knew with the third one, it would be very difficult to keep those schedules and really give to the kids what we needed to to mm-hmm. give to them. And so really just prayed through that and decided that it was time for me to come home. And we didn't know if we could afford that. You know, we'd made some uh, financial decisions in purchasing the house and the land and things like that. I was like, I don't know how that's going to work. But the Lord met us in that place and... Um, just continued to to bless us. But so I was in a place where I was just, oh, I wanted to come home so bad yeah. from full-time work and um, be in the home. And so for me, that was a blessing in that season yeah. to be there to just pour into them. And I couldn't wait to get to go to women's Bible study. That was like yeah. number one on my bucket list was like, I can't wait to go to Bible study. And um, that was a joy for me to get to come home and do that. But I know everybody has a different yeah. story. And then in that place, I got to buy just a, a different things that happened and, you know, serving in the church, the Lord began to open doors. Yeah. And I feel like my children, my family grew up with the ministry. I grew up in the ministry and my family grew up with me. And what started is kind of like a part time, part time thing to a part time to a Three quarter time to a full time. I really, a lot of people don't know, I did not start full time ministry until Jordan, my second one, left for college. Oh, wow. wow. And so, um, yeah. So then, you know, full time came later and then some other things. And you, yours is kind of similar to that. Kind of similar. Um, really, we had gone through infertility and I had felt in one night, I got up in the middle of the night and was on the floor of our bedroom crying out to the Lord, praying for a child. Mm. And um, I felt like he told me to quit my job. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was vice president of a Fortune 500 company. I made lots of money. And that had honestly become an idol for me. And Mm -hmm. I didn't listen right away. I knew that I heard that. But when I first started having children was around when I was coming off of a walk as a prodigal. And so I was just barely getting back into the things of the Lord and following him and really learning what it meant to not just be saved, but to live a laid down life for him. Right. And so when um, I finally left that job, I got, was pregnant immediately, yeah. like didn't need any hormones, didn't need mm-hmm. any Clomid, all the things I'd been doing. But I did go through a season of of grieving that Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't that I wasn't excited about being mother, that I didn't love being a mother, but there was a process of grieving, um, leaving a world that I'd been Mm -hmm. in, you know, since I was 18. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there was a sense of the enemy coming saying, this isn't as valuable. This isn't as important. Mm -hmm. And me just seeking scriptures and learning from other women the value and importance of it, because there is a a lie that comes in for some, maybe not for everybody, that that you lose value when you're at home and that you're not producing or giving back. And Mm -hmm. I've always been kind of a doer, worker, (laughs) need to, you know. And even just getting lost in what seems to be the mundane. 
right. of things that have to be done every day. And it, it does get repetitive and you think like, okay, well, we just did this yesterday. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got up, got the kids up, fed the kids, changed the diapers, washed right. the clothes, cleaned the house, did the Because some of those things feel the... insignificant. It's mm-hmm. just like, right. these are obligations. Like I have to keep... I have to keep this child alive. Like <laughs> it, it doesn't seem there's no like it doesn't feel like there's any glory in it. It is a mm-hmm. very like de de glory unglorified right. like position. And sometimes, yeah, that I, that thought comes in. I can imagine of like this isn't this isn't significant. This is important. Like you're doing the same things every mm-hmm. day, and you know you could be doing this. You could be doing that. And I, I know that some women wrestle through that. Mm -hmm. Well, and even in, if you think about in my early days when my kids were babies, Franz and I got separated. And so Franz was off with younger single women that didn't have kids. And I was home with a two-year-old and a newborn Mm -hmm. while Mm -hmm. he was off with other women. And so I ended up becoming a single mom with little bitty babies by myself. And so when you're in that process and you see this person off with younger single women, it does, those lies can creep in as well. Like, oh, well, you know, you're not as valuable. You're not as important. You're not as fun. There's different ways that the enemy does come in. And going back to a question a little bit um, before, I was blessed to have been raised by God-fearing, Bible-fearing women Mm -hmm. as well. So I went back to my mom talking about how when she was pregnant, she prayed and prophesied over me the Mm -hmm. entire time I was in the womb Mm -hmm. to um, my grandma Ruby speaking truth and my grandma Janice taking babies off the street in Honduras and and helping kids find homes. And so really growing in my identity as a believer and even fighting for Franz back in that place where when when God brought our family back together and we came to Beltway, we really started growing and understanding what it meant to not just be physical parents, but to become Mm -hmm. spiritual parents. And it's not that I didn't have that from my mom, but sometimes you need things from other women. So I had Mm -hmm. Deanna come alongside me. I had Betty Glass come alongside Mm -hmm. me. She's been mentoring me for eight Mm -hmm. years. I had Sherry. I had lots of women. Sherry's been a mama to everybody. Come alongside and really gird me up and teach me what it meant to be a spiritual mother to my children Right. And to really see the value and significance in that place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even thinking about that, um, I probably have just within the past few years really started to maybe make that turn as a spiritual mom to older women. Yeah. And so I'm newer to mm-hmm. that than Deanna is. And Deanna is one of the ones who has come alongside me when I first moved into full-time ministry as the pastor. It was very scary. Yeah. And I really had this picture of Deanna and Sherry come alongside me like like a horse would to train another, two yeah. horses would to train <laughs> another horse where they really came alongside me and helped guide me yeah. in mm. a lot of ways. And so I'm thankful to have been mothered by amazing women of God, both in my biological yeah. family and yeah. in my spiritual family. And I just now have that yearning with inside me to start to give that back, but it's a new mm-hmm. process yeah. for me. One thing as, as we're talking, and one of the reasons I asked that question for women who are mothers, or maybe they struggle with the concept of being mothers in the future and that kind of fight of all the tedious things that seem insignificant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you could be in a job or leading hundreds or thousands or this and that, like we underestimate the the multiplication effect of discipleship. Yes. Like, yes. let's like let's go to Jesus, one man who spent three years mm-hmm. with twelve people, right. changed the world. Forever. And it's like yeah. he poured into twelve; those twelve poured into you know twelve or more, and so on, and so on, and right. so on. And and I, I mentioned this in the last podcast because we were talking about discipleship, the the one with uh, Zazanya. Um, I was kind of talking about the old. Uh, movie Pay It Forward, the idea of like you bless yes. three people who bless three yes. people who bless three people, and just w- exponential growth that happens. And so even mm-hmm. thinking like Deanna with you of just uh, as I was thinking about uh, Taylor, how that's been passed down, like from pouring into just one daughter, not, mm-hmm. you know, like you've poured into all three, but just from one daughter, mm-hmm. like I can already see 
hundreds or close to thousands of lives that have been changed by that, Mm -hmm. all because of pouring into the one. Sometimes we think we have to do things for the masses, but really... Right. Like Jesus, he he had his like masses moments mm-hmm. where he would speak to crowds, but it was it was living life every day, just pouring in, yeah, loving to those that were right yeah, in front of him. Those that were right and I there. I think about that too. You know, Billy Graham had a mama, <laughs> yeah. and I think about the the significant impact that he had uh, in the world, really, with his ministry. But the opportunity to uh, what I love, and, and Jessica, you do this really well too, but to see the gifts that are in your children or in the um, people that the Lord puts in front of you, to see those gifts, and you, you call it the gold. I see the gold. Mm. There's there's gold in them that are heels. <laughs> and you call that out, and uh, as a, that's what a mother does. You see those gifts in other people, and especially in your children, when they can't see it. When they're in the middle of, you know, they tried out for this and didn't get it, or they didn't get that part, or they didn't um, make that team, or, you know, not in the way they wanted to, or, you know, some of their friends got to excel in another area, or they didn't test well in this area. And just that constant, you get to look in and go, but I see your gifts. I'm calling those out. I'm praying that forward for you and and just, you know, I feel like um, I am a product of my mother's prayers. And I remember there were times when she even said, you know, I went through a season of rebellion and I would come home at night and go to bed and my mother would come into my bedroom, crawl on the floor to not wake me up, lay a (laughs) hand on me and pray over me as I slept. Thank you, Jesus, for moms. (laughs) Yes. And there have been seasons in my children's lives because they're not perfect. None of us are. And you, you see, oh, maybe there's something not in alignment with the Lord there, and you pray over them, and you go in, and and, I many times went while my children were sleeping and prayed over them, uh, wrote blessings for them, wrote declarations for them, still to this day do. Um, I learned that from Mama Sherry Saltzgaber, and um, even putting those together and sending those out to the family. Hey, we're all going to pray this and declare this over each other this week, or, you know, your dad's going through this. We went through a season of Doug... Um, walking with a cancer diagnosis and still kind of dealing with a little bit of that. But it's like, we're going to declare this over him. We're going to pray this over him. We're going to... So I think that you get the opportunity to do that, to battle in prayer over your your children and the people God puts in front of you, but also to call out those gifts that you see again and again and again so that they begin to uh, believe it. Yeah, well, and we walked through good. that together recently where mm-hmm. Deanna and her daughter Taylor came and poured into me and my girls mm-hmm. because I had one trying out for mascot and mm-hmm. she didn't make mascot, mm-hmm. but it was a family coming together, mm-hmm. spiritual family. And Taylor was pouring into yeah. Ruby as Ruby was trying out for mascot. But even when Ruby didn't make it, mm-hmm. I was proud of her for oh, putting for herself sure. out there. And we had the conversation maybe Maybe this isn't what God had for you because maybe there's something else right. he had for you. Or what are some things that you can change? What do we need to learn from this? What do we do moving forward? Yeah. But just even having Deanna and Taylor come alongside and come into our home and pour mm-hmm. into the fruit of Deanna's ministry to Taylor is now a fruit of Taylor pours into my girls and mm-hmm. loves my girls. And it's just a beautiful... It is. And it I, really I is. love when Taylor was growing up, you know, there were some seasons in her life that just were a lot of disappointment. There was a lot of uh, physical, um, you know, diagnoses of some autoimmune things and uh, just disappointment. And I, <laughs> there were a lot of mentors and... Um, uh, friends that I called upon to encourage her and to spend time with her. Some high school girls would come alongside of her and speak into her life. And so I love it that now she gets to do that too with younger girls, you yeah. know. So, well, And again, there's an importance and value in other mothers mm-hmm. and spiritual mothers. So Taylor could be a spiritual oh, mother yeah. to my daughters, yeah. even though she's not yet a physical a mother. mother. Right. And Absolutely. so there's a beauty in that because we need all of it. We need each other as the body of Christ. Yeah. And so I wrote down earlier before we even got to this, um, what are things that you pray into, that you sow into for your daughters and for your kids? Because there might be some listening um, that 
Maybe they're thinking about uh, being a mother. Maybe they mm-hmm. are pregnant and they have this beautiful season of, of caring and developing life within them. Maybe they have young kids. Maybe they have adult kids and they've never prayed or declared, mm-hmm. you know, blessings and promises over them. Like, what does that look like? And what are some things that, that some other women, some other mothers can start to to pray into and believe for right. their kids or for the ones that, that they are helping, you know, raise or develop or love? Right. So what are some things that y'all are doing, but also that, that could um, kind of equip others to be able to, yeah. to start that process? One of my favorite um, prayers in Scripture is um, praying the armor of God over myself and my family every day. And I think <clears throat> back 25 years ago or whenever, um, when the men started doing the Wild at Heart <laughs> stuff, they were reading the Wild at Heart book. And uh, I read the book along with them because they had asked Sherry and I to teach a class for the women so that the women would have something to do while all the men were doing the Wild at Heart. And so we went through the book and kind of uh, pulled out some things. But in there, I remember him saying that... Um, that was super important to be praying that over yourself every day, especially if yeah. you were in ministry. And that just went into my spirit. And I like, I'm going to start doing that. And so I had for 20 something years, I mean, there's pretty much not a day that goes by that that's not being prayed over my family. I mean, there's some days that I miss that, but, but for the most part, very consistently just going through Ephesians six and, and praying that, but really realizing what each piece is and what it means and why it's important and asking the Lord really, really uh, today, and even now declaring. Before, I think it was an asking, and now it's a, no, I'm declaring, we are walking with this. We are walking girded with the belt of truth. We will receive, believe, hear, and speak your truth. We will not partner with deception today. We're not going to partner with the enemy. We partner with Jesus Christ, who is truth. Each one of those, those pieces. And so just praying that and speaking that, declaring that over them every day, and then, um, even blessings that I would put together and pray over them. Again, whatever I would see as their gifts, the Lord had given them um, spiritual gifts, but also um, skills and talents that I desire to see the Lord use for His kingdom. Um, one of my daughters is blessed with a fantastic, gorgeous, beautiful voice, and I always knew she loved music and um you know, she sang, and we we thought she was always kind of shy. Though we did not realize. I mean, and this is kind of sad. We did not realize this until she was a senior in high school, mm-hmm. where she said, "I'm going to walk away from this sport that she'd done her whole life and pursue music." And um, it was like, okay, you kind of like, where's this coming from? But I I love music, and I'd always been yeah. around music, and they had done choir and kids choir and stuff up CDC here at the church. Music teacher. But I didn't realize what her <laughs> talent was until she started pursuing that. To uh, guitar lessons from Josh Carroll yeah. here at the time. And uh, he was like, no, y'all, like, she's really good. She's picking this up really fast. And then she got to sing with, you know, um, uh, Peanut. We called him Peanut yeah, back Brent then. Dowdy. Brent and Dowdy. And you were a part of that band. And mm-hmm. Jordan got to sing with that uh, group down there in uh, in the chapel. Yep. And what did they call that? Um, call it the Amped Service. Amped Service. And to sit there and go, oh, my goodness. There's a gift there. (laughs) So then beginning to really call that out and pray into that. And now I just, I love the fact that in her local church, that she's a part of their worship team. And I just, it just blesses my socks off to to sit there and watch her um, lead people in worship. Yeah. Yeah. As you talk about, you know, praying the armor of God and and other blessings, and I want to continue the conversation on that uh, and hear from Jessica things that maybe you've prayed over or spoke over your daughters and believed for. But uh, I wanted to ask, are there the days that like you you feel like it's not taking effect, like you don't see it or you're discouraged? Are there the days that you don't want to? Are there the days that yeah. you don't like your children because you're so frustrated? <laughs> like, what do maybe. you do? <laughs> maybe. What do you do and mm-hmm. how do you how do you push forward when that doubt just comes against you, mm-hmm. you know, and it just seems like, oh, this is hopeless. It's not working. And you like the 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 fight, the the temptation mm-hmm. is just to to give up. And so 
I'm assuming as mothers, Mm -hmm. you have faced many of those seasons. Like, what did you do (laughs) and how did you push through? And then maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, have you seen a breakthrough come because Mm -hmm. you did not relent Mm -hmm. and you believed even though you didn't feel it? Yes. (laughs) You can speak into that a little bit, Jessica. Well, I I mean, I know you went on with that question. I have a hard time, like, jumping. So the one thing that back when I first started coming back to the Lord after the prodigal season is I prayed the book Blessing Your Spirit by Sylvia Gunther and Mm -hmm. Arthur Burke over my family, over Franz, me, Ruby, Layla. Mm -hmm. And it's a book that has scripture, but specific spiritual blessings. And it's a 40-day book of blessings. But then you can also go on and pray over the names of God and blessings of God over those names over your family. And I feel like that in that process, I really started to see a shift. And every so often, I'll re-pray that book over Mm -hmm. my family. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that I don't even believe it. I have seen we are walking in the fruit of those prayers yes. right now That's and yes. absolutely walking in the fruit of those prayers. I look back and I'll even be rereading it and like, this is happening. This has happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I highly recommend that book. There's also Praying the Bible um, by Stacy Campbell. Highly recommend that. Mm-hmm. That's a great book of praying just scripture mm-hmm. over your family. But for me with my girls, the biggest thing that I want them to get more than anything because of my own journey, obviously, we don't want our kids to make the same mistakes right. we've made. Right. We don't want them to face the same battles. We want them to have that Christian life that it's like things go really well for mm-hmm. them. I just pray for them to get to the end of themselves faster than I did. Mm-hmm. I pray for them to really understand that it's mm-hmm. not just about salvation and going to heaven, but it's about literally dying to yourself. Yeah. And for them to really understand, truly understand what surrender is more than grades, sports, anything. I know that if I, my kids have a relationship with Jesus, and if I can do everything I can to facilitate that yes. while I have the influence over them, while they're in my home, that I will have given them everything they need to succeed in every part of their life. If they have Jesus, they have everything that they yeah. need. And I believe that with all of my being, just because of, of personal experience. And so I go out of my way to facilitate relationship with them and Jesus mm-hmm. by... If they ask me a question, I may spout back, what does what does the Lord say about that? Have you prayed right. about that? Yeah. And just trying to get them to hear for themselves. It's real easy as a mother to hear mm-hmm. on behalf of your child. It's much different to give Teaching them the them tools to for them to be mm-hmm. able to hear That's good. and mm-hmm. stop where you've said that enough in the annoying them rolling their eyes, mom, <laughs> oh my gosh, I just want to hear from you. Well, you know what? Faith comes from hearing and from hearing the word of God. Right. And, and from hearing from God for yourself. And so I know that they will, their faith will be increased as they hear from Jesus for themselves, and That's then good. they see the fruit of that. And yes, absolutely, mm-hmm. we've walked in seasons where my kids have not been them, their best selves. And I've been the key to that. I'm telling you, it is on your face. Right. It is right. on your face praying for your kids. And yeah. it is like, Lord, whatever you need to do, mm-hmm. whatever you need to do to come through in mm-hmm. this place, then please come through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it's like, you don't even have to beg him. It seems like begging, but he desires to come through for your children. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, you get to see the fruit of that. And I've had different instances. Deanna's walked through these with mm-hmm. me. There's nothing that I've walked through with my kids that Deanna <laughs> has not been <laughs> right by my side, warring, giving advice. Our life group, really, from and right. I are the babies in our life right. group. And so we have we a lot of life group. parents that are like, this is what mm-hmm. you do. And we're like, yes, thank mm-hmm. you. And have walked through so much. Um, the, the community that we have, we're blessed to share that they have walked through um, so much loss. Yeah. yeah. Um, Especially in the last... Oh my a handful goodness. of years, yes. Like knowing y'all's group, like yes. there's been so much stuff to walk through. Yes, and and then dealing with the transition of uh, elderly parents and um, sickness and illness and hard things in life. Um, Doug's sister um, took her life a couple of years ago. Um, seasons of just walking through really hard things with one another and praying that and. Um, encouraging one another, and so just having that community around you. But um, yeah, prayer is huge. Battling for them is huge. So when you don't have, when it feels like you don't have the strength or the drive Mm -hmm. to do it, do you just, is it just about pushing forth and doing it regardless? Is it, I mean, sometimes faith 
is literally, I am declaring this, mm-hmm. even though my heart's not in line with it, but I'm going to declare it till I'm empowered by yes. it. I mean, yes, I, I, I do that. And I, there have been times where you kind of just did. And then, and then two, it may be one of those things where you need to pull away mm-hmm. and you just need to sit with Holy Spirit. You just need Absolutely. to sit. You just need to worship. You need to just, you know, I, I, I would go to my, uh, my quiet place. I don't have a prayer closet. I have a prayer car. <laughs> yes. And so oh, this my... <laughs> this lady, this girl, she drives around this town. I do and love she it. Prays. She does. It's I drive true. around the city. I drive around the church. Uh, people just they laugh because they see me going around in circles around the church. And uh-huh. but I, that's my personal space. I can sing as loud as I want. I can worship as loud as I want. I can stick my hand up through the sunroof and <laughs> praise the Lord. And you know, I get to do whatever you I want to do. Point and pray and declare, and <laughs> I you can. Declare. I, I mean, can do all those things with. Air conditioning. <laughs> it's awesome. And so, yeah, I I have my mobile prayer closet. And so it's just maybe getting away in a place of just having Holy Spirit minister to you and refresh you and remind me, okay, Deanna, where were you at this age? Amen. I've had yes. to ask a question. Yes. Deanna, where were you? Um, how did... Wh- what happened in this place or what did you learn? So what? Are, maybe go at this a different direction. How can you pray differently or how can you bless differently? How can yeah. you love in this really hard place right now? Yeah. I because completely there were seasons. agree with that. Yeah. I think about like where I've been and it's like, mm-hmm. no, God came through. He yeah. came, yes. He is still God. Yes. He is still sovereign. He is still on his throne. He wrote the book of life for yes. Ruby and Layla before yeah. one of their days came to be. And I'm just like, yes and amen with whatever you say over their lives yeah. and whatever right. you need to do to get them there and do whatever you right. need to do and in me. And I remember to get a season there. where yeah. uh, actually uh, one of my daughters called me from college and said, I need you to stop praying over me. <laughs> 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 because obviously what they wanted to happen was not happening. And they knew that the prayers of, of, the saints were <laughs> right. <laughs> moving forward. And it's just like, I just need you to stop. And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. And nope. so, you know, there that's had to so be fun. a realignment with Holy Spirit yeah. in their heart. But but even at, not just as mothers, but let's just talk about as people in general, thinking yeah. back in seasons, you know, I think back to my childhood self, my preteen and my teen self, my early 20 self. Like, <laughs> I know my journey and I know how the Lord has walked with me. I know how revelation has come. And so sometimes it's just thinking, how would who I am now speak? to the 12 year old yes, me and yes. maybe that gives me a little insight of how to speak to a 12 year old son or daughter mm-hmm. or a 12 year old person that I'm discipling like we you you've got to remember where you came from how the lord came through or what wasn't there that you wish would have been there mm-hmm. um and and kind of get to come from it from that angle so sometimes i mean you don't have to have the answer sometimes you just have to remember where you once were the faithfulness of the lord and now knowing yourself and knowing your journey how can you be for that person you know what you didn't encounter till maybe a later point in life i mean that's right. kind of what jessica you said a minute ago like that your girls would come to the place of of like losing themselves and dying to self way sooner um, mm-hmm. than it it was for for your own journey, mm-hmm. and so. Well, and I think about just in in a book that we recently based released on. Bill Johnson talks about um, bringing the kingdom around you. So if you're not seeing the kingdom in a neighbor or in a friend or a coworker mm-hmm. or whatever it is, not just going with at them with Christianese or scripture, but stopping and asking the Lord. What would minister to their hearts? Mm -hmm. What would show them your heart for them in doing that thing? And it could be something just like going over to a neighbor and saying, hey, can I help you paint your fence? Can I help you mow mow your yard or whatever it might be for your kids? Sometimes it's just sitting and being with them and not saying anything. I've noticed that the trips to Sonic, hey, do you want to just go with me to go get, Mm -hmm. you know, some... Mm-hmm. cheese tater tots or ocean water yeah. and just sitting in the car and not saying anything, but just being there just and being, being there. present. Mm-hmm. And that's what God does for us. Think Absolutely. about it. He's mm-hmm. always here with us. And even mm-hmm. as you talk about that, there's a podcast uh, that we had on um, where Shelly Presley and I think maybe even Nathan Healy were on it. Uh, I'll find out which number that was in a minute. But Shelly was talking about how she realized 
You know, when we go to Starbucks and we get a grande, mm-hmm. uh, you know, drink size while we're in the car driving around, they get to a certain point. And mm-hmm. then her and Eric, her husband, one day were like, you know what? What if we went to a venti size? And then we <laughs> drove around a little longer and they realized and discovered that it just takes that little bit more, a little bit more of a of a drink size and a little bit more time driving in the car. Their their children would actually get to those places of opening yes. up and sharing what's going on. And so they didn't like force it or pry it. They just took note of like, okay, they're getting to this point. What mm-hmm. if I gave them more presence? Like what if I gave them more time just being with them? Mm-hmm. Can we get to something deeper so that you can apply blessing, you can apply the word of God and and, right. and truth. Um, I think about something. I took Shelly and Eric's intentional parenting class years ago, and they had said something about when your kids have like an eruption, that it's not necessarily them being a bad kid, that mm-hmm. something may have happened to them. And literally that next week I got to apply it. <laughs> Excuse me. I picked up um, the girls from school and Ruby was just kind of not being her best self towards Layla mm-hmm. in the car. And instead of turning around and just demanding that she mind or mm-hmm. obey or be kind, I just said, did something happen to you today? Yeah. And just mm. tears yeah. came. And so I think that there's a, a d- new awareness that we can gain as That's parents good. where maybe when our kids aren't acting like them, their best self, maybe mm-hmm. there's something deeper going on and we get to dig a little bit, which may mean the venti size or posing questions is so good. Right. (laughs) And just questions. And because then it was more sonic trips, more questions. Mm -hmm. Somebody (laughs) had said something to her and called her a name or something and it was just hurting her feelings. So she was in that hurt place reacting to the other one. And but then we got to go back and minister in that place. And I think it was that somebody had called her root beer you know, and she didn't like it. So now actually that's a nickname in our home. We call Ruby root beer because it's like no big deal. Everybody loves root beer. People love root beer floats. Everybody yeah. loves Ruby. And mm-hmm. so she's yeah. our little root beer. So you redeemed that. Right. Yeah. You redeemed that, you know, curse, that thing mm-hmm. that seemed like it took Something life or put her down. Her. Right. And because of the opportunity for ministry, right. like the Lord's redemption came through and now that's been redeemed and now it's life and fun. Um, that's, that's so powerful. Real quick, Jessica, you mentioned the book, uh, by Bill Johnson. What is the title? And I'll include it in the show notes it's also. It's called Born for Significance. Mm-hmm. And so it goes all the way. It's identity to the core. Yes. And I highly Great. recommend it. We're going to be doing a women's Bible study over yes. it this summer. Summer book study. study. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So you can, I'm sure you can go to beltway.org slash women yes. and find yes. out more and about that into and a group. get connected into that. Yeah. For we sure. have more books. So join us. <laughs> um, I want to end with this question. We need to wrap it up. I have a ton more questions to ask, but... But I kind of want to end with this one. How can men help support and call forth life from within women and their roles and how they're equipped? Like, whether it's a husband, whether it's just a friend, whether it's a family member, um, how can men help support and call out the strength and the gift that Mm -hmm. God has equipped women uh, to walk in? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I've been super blessed to have a husband that recognized the gifts that the Lord placed within me, and um, whether that was gifts of leadership or um, things in ministry. Um, And so as the Lord would open new doors for me, that he would pray into that and then be willing to say, yeah, go through that door, Mm -hmm. knowing that it would maybe be more time away from home uh, or... um, greater weight of responsibility, especially in the, in the later season in life, mm-hmm. but to to get that support from him, and he prays for me. I mean, there was even a time where uh, the men's pastor, Randy Reese, had asked me to come and speak to the men one night. They were doing something up here, and I was like, Ooh, I don't know about that. And he's like, I want you to get right in the middle of their chili. And I was like, I don't know if I want to get right in the middle of their chili. <laughs> and so I went to Doug and I was like, man, I, 
you know, I don't know exactly what to say yet or what to, to do. And, and I said, I, I need your prayers. And so, yeah, he was like praying over me, what I would say, how I would go about it. It was really encouraging to me. And then really coming alongside of me in the ministry. And so I was laughing when we were at release because Franz was there all weekend too, and he helped build some of the sets and put things together. But then he stayed all weekend and was a cameraman and um, helped support Jessica. And so years ago, Doug had come to one of the, uh, you know, retreats with me as well and helped play on the worship team. He played the drums and he was there all weekend and was prayer coverage. So I think prayer coverage, that spiritual leadership part is huge as a man, a husband, a father, or as a leader, if you're a leader in any area that -hmm. that just praying for those people that you have responsibility for, I think is huge. That's good. Loving, encouraging in those places, again, calling out those gifts and allowing the Lord to to use them. And Doug has been, even in a very practical sense, um, supportive at home. I'd never, never, never had to worry about um, leaving the home or, you know, even on mission trip. I'm leaving for Israel at a very crucial time in my kids' lives when they're in elementary uh, and junior high ages and uh, gone for 12 days and what all that entailed. And I'm like, how is he going to know he's working full time? How's he going to know where to get the kids and what this is going on? You know, all the things. And he did a great job. Yeah. And so just stepping in and um, uh, allowing the, the the wife, the mother to, you know, walk in those That's gifts. Good. You know what that Franz you, actually came home that night. He was at that men's rally that Deanna spoke. He was like, man, Deanna is such a powerful speaker. I just loved having her there. <laughs> and so, That's you know, awesome. Fran, that's why Franz likes women's ministries. Like, yeah. That's awesome. But what about I agree. you, Jess? How can men support and call forth the life and the giftings within yeah. women? At, one of the biggest things is what Deanna said, the prayer coverage, but also presence. Yes. Even her talking about Doug being present there. There's something about having your spiritual covering just be present yeah. mm-hmm. and just be supportive and just feeling that love, that covering, and that support from your spiritual leader is such a blessing, and mm-hmm. it makes you feel encouraged as a woman in the body of Christ to have that covering and that support. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if they're not saying anything, it goes all the way back to the sonic drive. Sometimes we need our husbands to take us on a sonic drive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I, it can look like dating your wife, mm-hmm. talking, you know, encouraging, yeah. asking questions, sometimes coming home and maybe she's had a, a she's a stay-at-home mom and she looks like her hair's flying every which direction. <laughs> it could be a little date night on the back porch or helping get the kids to bed early oh, and yeah. just yeah. being... Huge present. Just, yeah. I think about times I've been going to bed and I've had a hard day and Franz knew that. And I just feel his hand mm-hmm. on my back and I know he's praying for me and That's I feel good. that covering over him or he's like, let me do this for you yeah. and That's things really that good. would usually And I think be... really within a home too, that there's not necessarily a, this is the woman's role, this is the man's role or what traditionally you might think, you know, right. moms usually did this, the dads, did, whatever. I mean, you really have to come together right. and share some of those roles. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Doug is a great cook. I am not. Uh-huh. <laughs> and everybody knows it in our family. And so he loves to cook and grill and do all those things. And and um, he's helped with that. He helps with He's helped with laundry. He has helped bathe kids. Uh, there was a season where, you know, I got to be on the pastor search team, and we were up here early in the morning and several times throughout the week, and he would get the kids up, all three of them. Even Caitlin was a, a young, probably 18 months old, two years old, and getting them dressed and ready and bringing them to church. And just that constant taking care of practical needs, you know, Well, and even like, Brett, you're my brother. You've been here even after Franz's surgery when I was having a breakdown um, just from what Franz went through, and you and Eddie Smith came and prayed for me. Mm -hmm. And so I had a spiritual father, spiritual brother alongside me, and it's Mm -hmm. just I know that the men in this body, the men on staff— they're, they're my family. Yeah. This is our family. And I feel that from them. I feel the love. I feel the covering. I feel that brotherly, fatherly love from the men on staff. And mm-hmm. so I feel like the Beltway men really represents that really well, yeah. that spiritual covering. And I'm, I'm honored 
and just blessed by the way that we're loved by the men in, in yeah. this staff and yeah. in this body. That's great. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being here. One happy Mother's Day to thank both of you. you. Thank you. Um, I'm thankful for just the role um, that you play in so many people's lives, but even just mine and, and how that's looked over the last several years or, you know, almost all my life on and off, <laughs> Deanna. Um, but to all of you ladies out there, moms and those who aren't biological moms, happy Mother's Day. Happy your Mother's life, Day. Yes. Your life matters. Your leadership yes. matters. You hold so much beauty and power and and gold, so much yes. within you mm-hmm. um, that you need to call that forth in other people. Just like Deanna said at the very beginning, calling forth life. It's part of how you were created right. and the way that God equipped you. And so I just want to say thank you to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. Well, we hope you have a great week. Be blessed and remember... God is moving in your life beyond Sundays.